So I know what you're thinking, another Jumix video? How many Jumix videos are there on YouTube at this point? Hell, I've even made a Jumix video before, but I feel like it's important to come back to this subject because first of all, that video is old and it kind of sucks to be honest with you. So today we're going to be talking about the rapper Jumix, his sudden blow up, the shitty tactics behind his rise to fame, and... Slow down there, buckaroo. And I have more information that I can add to the story now. I always hate to do similar topics to other YouTubers because I feel like it comes off as recycled content or just the same story spit out time and time again. I know everybody else already does that, but for me, I don't really enjoy doing it. Number 15. But I've been tapped in with Jumix for so long that I feel like this video is worth making and there's a lot to say about this crazy guy. So let's get into it and look at the story of Jumix. Yeah! Marcus Sling was born February 14th, 2000 in Chicago, Illinois. So my original video, I said New York, but I don't know where I got that information. I can't find that again, but it seems like he grew up in Chicago at the very least. He has a German father and a Hispanic mother, which yes, means he can say the N-word. This is all I ever wanted, nigga. Which he definitely takes full advantage of, let me tell you. He grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, just like any other kid in the 2000s, eventually getting into rock and hip hop music. Hey, this is my shit and creating his own pop punk band known as No Signal. Just like most punk bands, they never really went anywhere and eventually he started to gravitate more to the hip hop side of things, noticing all the new artists coming out in the SoundCloud wave, including people like Lil Peep. Of course, he just recently passed away, meaning that his music got more popular than ever and many kids would listen to it, get influenced by it, and start making similar types of music and Jumix was one of them. And this is a detail that I find people often mix up where people think that his label turned him into an emo artist, but Jumix was already making this type of music as far back as 2017 before he ever signed that paperwork so this was always the type of style he wanted to go with it's just that when he got with the label they dressed him up as more of an emo artist than before you know with the depressed as fuck shirts and all that type of shit but we're not there yet but his actual online persona was closer to somebody like little pomp or boot gang where he would do antics online to try to get attention including spitting into orange juice containers and then putting them back on the shelves so overall jumix was kind of an amalgamation of all the current trends in hip-hop at the time put into one artist and not done well at all. But Jumix wasn't alone on this endeavor because he actually had two friends. First of all, I don't know Conundrum, just going by Conundrum at the time, who was a fellow rapper in his clique, Sad Boy Suffer, and his friend Travis, who created the clothing brand known as Loveburns. A lot of people think Conundrum was actually the one to start that clothing brand, but it seems to be this unrelated guy who was just friends with Jumix early on and then stuff went down, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. However, there is one small detail I do want to mention. If you watch my little Saku video, I mentioned I didn't know how Jumix and Lil Saku met in the first place, but it turns out she was actually a model for Love Burns, as well as her current boyfriend, Weather, being another model for Love Burns, and that's how she met Jumix and him. As you can see, it's all connected. But anyways, back to Sad Boy Suffer, there's actually a third member of Sad Boy Suffer known as Sad Crod, which originally I didn't really know where this guy came from. He's quite a bit younger than the other two, but it turns out he's actually Jumix's blood little brother. There's not really a whole lot of pictures of him online or a lot of information about him. I can't even really find any music from the guy, so he's not that important to the story, but I thought he was still worth mentioning. So Crab would dye his hair blue, Conundrum would dye his hair pink, and Mark would brand himself Little Jumix after his favorite type of juice and dye his hair green, and together, Sad Boy Suffer was formed. Then from 2017 to 2018, Jumix ended up dropping six projects, being Little Jumix Part 1 and Little Jumix Part 2, clearly inspired by Little Peep, Love Burns with a Z, Screwed, Love Burns with an S, and Rip Little Jumix. And of course, there's no real notable features on any of these songs besides Conundrum and of course probably some other people from his school that just so happen to want to get on a track and rap because I can't find information on any of these people whatsoever. But one thing that is important to mention is the Sad Boy Suffer tag that will come back into the story a little bit later. So of course, being 2018 and being the absolute apex of the SoundCloud wave, dropping this mediocre emo music onto SoundCloud really wasn't going to get Jumix any buzz, and it seems like there was no hopes of him making his way into the rap game, until he pulled a stunt. You see, apparently Jumix was a big Xan head during high school. Initially, I didn't really believe this, as I thought he was just capping about it to seem cool, but a lot of people that supposedly actually know Jumix in real life commented that he actually was a pretty big Xan head and would often do antics and weird shit and annoy everybody in class, which can be proven when he smoked a joint in class yelling world star as his teacher completely dies inside. So blasting the free falling object is given by the World Star, let's go! Mark. Gang shit, you know how it is. They didn't think I would do this. They didn't think I would do this. They didn't think I would do this. Let's go. 
God. I mean, can you blame the woman? The kid with the green hair is smoking a joint in class, screaming, you've just lost complete control of your life, and you're looking at the newest generation just thinking, why did I even bother to become a teacher if this is what's going to happen? And of course, he gets suspended because of this, but it doesn't matter because the video ends up going viral, getting reposted on No Jumper. Everybody across the internet was looking at it and laughing and saying that this kid seems like the most annoying person to ever exist, but whatever, it doesn't matter because he was finally getting some clout. And that probably would have been the full story of Jumix, just a kid who tried to rap got one viral video and then faded away but it turns out that a label known as core tan actually noticed this video and decided to fly him out to sign him to a new plan to plant him in the industry now i would tell you about core tan but unlike 10k and hitmaker there's absolutely no history to this label whatsoever there's not even any other acts on it besides jumix and one i love mcconan song so they basically don't exist besides just planting jumix so it's probably just a bunch of old rich dudes with some extra money laying around thinking they could plant a new soundcloud rapper and get hit with the kids but it didn't really work out but for now well they're gonna give it a shot they brought him out to LA signed him to a deal where they could control all of his actions and make his entire persona deleted all his old music got him a face tat got him connected to I Love McConan so he could ghostwrite his newest track got him some big-time producers got him to record a track that they completely made for him known as Trapped and then Taco a DJ that's most well known for working with Odd Future ended up previewing this at a festival at the time nobody knew what this track was or where it was coming from besides the fact that it had a sample from a made in Tokyo beat and it kind of sounded like a knockoff X, which is exactly what the label was going for. They knew that X recently passed away, they knew that type of music was popular, and they thought if they made this little green haired kid scream his heart out, then everybody would love it immediately. When the track finally dropped, it got a whopping 4,000 plays on SoundCloud in the first couple weeks it was out, and then they posted it on YouTube, once again got like 300 plays. But don't worry, they had the music video coming directed by Taco. It was a well put together, heavily funded music video with Fortnite in it. There was no way the kids weren't gonna like this and once again it got like 5,000 plays in a week. So the label knew what they had to do with some sneaky tag work where they put XXXTentacion and Little Peep in the tags to try to market it a little bit better as well as just flat out buying views for the video. They were able to push it into everybody's recommend it and overnight Jumix was a success. Well kind of a success. I mean the video was popular. A lot of people were watching it but once again they were laughing at it. Nobody really seemed to like the song. He wasn't very good at screaming because he hadn't trained his voice at all to actually scream correctly. Adam22 reacted to it and just kind of made fun of it. It got posted on some trap metal Instagram pages and most of the people in the comments said this isn't even trap metal, this is just garbage. But for the second time, Jumix was turned into an absolute joke, but he was still blowing up. So the label had no choice but to go back to the drawing board and try for a new style. And this time they made the song known as Loner that sounds a lot more like Lil Peep than XXX and Tassion. And people actually seemed to like this video. It did pretty well, just about as well as Trapped, and it seems like he was getting some actual fans. But unfortunately for Jumix, before that video he even got a chance to drop another video drop from a youtuber known as progress completely exposing him and i mean come on what's with all these youtubers taking information from progress videos and not even shouting him out come on he's a true youtube og he definitely set the groundwork for a lot of what we do here put some respect on his name come on anyways at the time progress was already blowing up for a video that he made exposing baby goth as an industry plant so when he did the same thing for jumix it completely derailed his career and exposed jumix for being an industry plant as well and at the time people really didn't like that now that's pretty usual almost every artist you listen to now was an industry plant but at the time people were not fucking with it but honestly nothing probably would have came from it if jumix didn't decide to actually comment on the video and say lol you're pretty stupid now, this was the official jumix account that he was releasing music on with over a hundred thousand subscribers and he was commenting on a stupid youtuber's video saying lol you're pretty stupid only boosting the video even more and exposing him even further after that he then took to his snapchat story to tell people to dislike the video and telling everybody that his chain was actually real now i never really seen this jumix chain before but look at this shit that's not real so at this point jumix's whole persona was basically cracked open he was exposed as an industry plant and nobody really liked him in the first place but despite that Corten kept pushing and putting out more music under his name he had that infamous genius interview where a lot of people made fun of him for his off-key singing you could be sad because baby i'm a loner yeah he took a picture with adam 22 showing that he might get a no jumper podcast appearance in the future with hella sketchy actually commenting on this picture saying he has hella sketchy hair implying that he might have actually stole his style i mean if you look at the two of them side by side you can tell that they look pretty similar but who bit who we may never know but shout out hella sketchy ended up dropping another video for his track wish me death in april 2019 followed by alive in my coffin in june and finally the track billy eilish now this track is very interesting because there's quite a bit of drama that surrounds it 
First things first, Gumix tried to promote this release by taking a fan picture with Billie Eilish and then trying to play it off like they actually knew each other when they didn't. And apparently he tried to post some snippets showing him with a girl that was supposed to be Billie Eilish, leading her to comment, yo, I fuck with you, but this is pretty weird, that girl's not me. Which of course made Gumix take down the post, but he still put the song out known as Billie Eilish with a video with a girl that looks like Billie Eilish, so super weird there. Second interesting thing about this song is it's actually a bot song from an artist known as Lil Soda Boy. He actually made a whole track that's called Strawberry Blonde and then Jumix and his team bought that song and remade it into Billie Eilish. And if you don't know Lil Soda Boy, he's most well known for working with Lil Tracy, Goth Boy Click, Cold Heart, and people like that. He was kind of a big deal back in the day, but in recent years he's fallen off a little bit, but he's still important to the overall hip hop world, I guess. And after that, he put out his first label backed EP known as Loner, which included all the previously mentioned songs, including a couple new ones. And surprisingly, shortly after that, he actually took down the Billie Eilish video. I'm not really sure why it is. I'm not sure if Billie's team got in contact with him or he was just embarrassed about it but either way it's not up anymore after that he dropped one more big song with travis barker that was called spray paint and then he dropped a second ep known as lover and this one doesn't really have any notable songs on it whatsoever it was just his second ep and very closely branded the same way as loner so it never really did anything either shortly after that dropped in november 2019 he went on a short tour in japan where he did about six shows and then people didn't really hear about jumix for a couple months to come it seems like maybe his label was trying to shelve him because besides one collaboration with lil xan known as XOXO, which there's a whole story to. If you want to check that out, watch my Many Beasts of Lil Xan as well as my Lil Saku video because there's a whole lot of information about how that song was made. Besides that, he basically faded away throughout 2020. Or at least that's what you would think if you were only paying attention to Jumix because he actually started rapping under another name known as Goodnight Mark. All this music was dropped on a SoundCloud account and it was definitely less well produced than his actual Jumix stuff, but it seems like he was only able to drop under this new name because they weren't letting him drop anything under the Jumix name. And then at the very end of 2020 he was exposed for a second time but this time the allegations were a little bit more serious than this being an industry plant it turns out that he was actually doxing his friends he switched up on them he was falsely copyright striking different songs and trying to destroy all their music it turns out that jumix got a huge ego after he blew up and decided to go against conundrum actually doxing him on his snapchat story as well as copywriting all of his songs with the sad boy suffer tag in it because he's the one who made it and then he also stole the love burns account and tried to pass it off as his own and this whole thing was documented within this progress video once again exposing him and a lot of people think this is when his label dropped him but he actually released three more songs under the label in 2021 after this so i think the real reason that he left his label is because his contract was just up none of these songs are really notable they never got big time videos or got any push from the label they just kind of dropped on his soundcloud and after that he was finally an independent artist or in other words what most people would call it a 22 year old man with a face tat no job experience green hair and completely hate it within the music industry meaning he has no way to get to the top but jumix was still determined and he did not stop. So for the next couple years he just kind of floundered around, tried to find ways to reinvent himself, didn't really drop any music under the name, did a couple small time shows but there was only really like 20 to 30 people at these shows until around 2023 when he ended up dropping a song called This Time which once again was another song that he actually bought from Little Soda Boy with a lot of people in the comments calling him out about this. This is how he ended up responding to that which is kind of funny overall. He also dyed his hair orange and it seems like he was trying to reinvent himself once again. Okay once again I'm adding this part in the editing process because there's a couple things about this story that don't fully make sense. First of all, I noticed that Jumix actually docks Sad Crod at the same time that he docks everybody else. So that means that maybe Sad Crod actually isn't Jumix's little brother because why would you dox your own brother if he lived with your parents? Wouldn't that just be doxing yourself or doxing your family? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if Crod's not actually Jumix's brother, I don't know why they were hanging out with a 15 year old. Like I think he was 15 at the time that all the Saku stuff went down. So that means that Jumix would have already been 20 and he was 15 so he was 13 when they met in high school it makes no sense crowd is definitely the most mysterious figure in this entire story but i've never seen anything from him no pictures no instagram no music maybe he just quit altogether after jumix doxed him but who knows i edited sbs had a little you know they did a little something to stay relevant you know like that bro like i made them who they are it's whatever we move oh yeah by the way i moved houses and i changed numbers so hey but you know, for the other people who live with their parents still, I still got their Eddie, so 
That's all I gotta say, bro. And they can't move. They live with their parents. I can move. Another thing I want to mention is maybe Jumix actually did get dropped directly after all the doxing stuff, and he just had three leftover songs that technically he made with the label that he ended up dropping. Because there actually was a music video for one of these songs that ended up dropping on a smaller YouTube channel. He also had some music on 188 Riot. I don't know what's going on with that. A good majority of his songs are gone now, like the Travis Barker one is no longer on his YouTube. All the videos got taken down. There's only these four that are left. Maybe he's the most proud of those, but I don't know why he would take down any of them. It's almost certain that Jumix does own his own YouTube channel because he posts a bunch of bullshit on there, but I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm not sure when they dropped him. I'm not sure of the whole story after 2021, but it's very mysterious. I also want to mention that he never really stopped dropping music. It seems like he just put it out on different platforms under different names. He made a couple of videos, but they ended up getting deleted. And on Genius, it actually mentions that Jumix has two albums that came out in 2023. Bubble Numb that I can't find anything out about. Apparently it came out on a Spotify account called Bubble Numb. I think maybe it's a and he also has this project called Whiskey Roads that apparently he put out. It's called a country album. I don't know how it's a country album whatsoever after listening to a couple songs. I mean, there's a guitar beat on one of the songs and then the rest of it just kind of sounds like Cardi Opium music, but yeah. I don't know, I guess that's a country album that he ended up deleting. And then maybe here we can just do a super cut of all the times that he called his fans the N-word or just kind of fought with a fan or tried to scam somebody or got in a fight with another rapper. All the kind of goofy stuff he's been doing in the past couple of years, we can put that there. Baby, I'm a loner, yeah. You could be sad. Cause baby, I'm a loner, yeah. You could be mad. Cause baby, I'm a loner. Yeah, you could be sad, cause baby I'm a loner, yeah, you could be mad, cause baby I'm a loner. I also just want to add here, I wasn't quite sure where to put this, but it seems like Jumix really does have a love for trap metal, because at one point he made a music video called Parasite, where he's clearly biting NASCAR aloe, like right down to the hairstyle, the video type, the song sounds the same. Yeah. He's also had issues with A14 where he told A14 to pull up and try to fight him. I don't really know what's going on here, but this screenshot's been shared around quite a bit. Him and Deadbeat Villain have gone back and forth. That's another trap metal artist. They're kind of like a meme artist who became a trap metal artist, so he's had beef with him. And he even kissed Sos Mula at one point, so he's got a big love for trap metal. I don't think trap metal loves him back, but <laughs> that's what it is. After that, he deleted the video and then started going under the name XOXO for a little bit and dyed his hair black. He ended up dropping a project under that name on SoundCloud and released a couple of videos on YouTube too called part one and two but it seems like they're deleted at this point and once again in 2024 he returned to the Jumix name. He got the green hair back, he has a shiny new outlook on life and once again it seems like he's trying to build himself up in Chicago starting up something called the industry plantation which I have no idea what that is but apparently he's trying to be a manager to smaller artists. He's also offering people free features for anybody who clicks his Temu link. He's trying to get a hundred people to click a Temu link and then you get a free feature from Jumix so how could you turn that up? And just like any other chronically online person he's given his two cents on the whole Israel-Palestine conflict as well as telling people that he'll be voting for Trump in 2024. A little bit of casual transphobia going down that's a good way to promote your music. He's making Spanish stuff, he's releasing snippets, he's making his own beats, he's doing it all. And he's even calling out other people for being industry plants to try to promote his music as well as saying that he's actually trying to do a sting operation on a pal apparently if you give him enough money he'll catch a pal which I don't even know what the fuck's going on at this point. Yo what's up guys? So for a couple months, I've been running a sting operation around the Midwest area, trying to catch predators. Meet Derek, age 38. He thinks he's going to hook up with a 15-year-old boy. We've been talking back and forth, and it's time to execute the plan. This is where I need your help. I need to get cameraman, security, and etc. And I need money to do that. So in order to get him in jail, I need you guys to pre-save my song so I can get a budget into getting the sting operation on lead. We can all do this together. We can all catch this criminal. Let's do this. He's trying to promote his music. It seems like he's completely off his rocker at this point, but you know what? It seems like he's just trying to get the clout back, trying to get stuff going, beefing with people. He's doing what everybody else is doing, so I guess you can't really be mad at it. And honestly, I just think he's been so active recently because he's seen that Rich Van Shaw video that recently came out, you know, where industry plants nowadays, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna get some clout off of that. Hey, you know, do what you wanna do. I mean, I feel like people in my comments are gonna say, you only did this video because he did it. So, you know, whatever, get the clout. But overall, Jimmix is an interesting little goober. He's still going. 
maybe he'll make that comeback. You know, if you want to get signed to that industry plantation type thing, then you definitely got to go do that. Give him some love. Listen to the music because Jumix is coming back 2024, baby. Yeah, as of now, that's the whole story of Jumix until his absolutely amazing documentary comes out and makes this video completely irrelevant. It will be the true story, let me tell you. But if his recent interviews are anything to go off of where people ask him the most basic questions ever and he doesn't actually answer anything, let me tell you that documentary is probably going to be biased as fuck. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Love you, Jumix, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Like the video. Got a second channel called Twisted Society if you want to post your music there. Hey, who knows? Maybe Jumix will even post his music there. You know, that'd be really cool, man. Besides that, we're just having some fun here. It's lighthearted. I know that he's going to say I'm stirring up drama, but this ain't drama. We're just having fun, telling some stories. So shout out Jumix and shout out Rich Van Shaw for that video. Shit's cool. Shout out everybody. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time. Oh yeah, one final thing I do want to mention before the video is over. I did actually reach out to Jumix to try to interview him. He didn't respond to me, which is fair. I also reached out to a couple people around him to do an interview and none of them wanted to talk about the whole story, which is fine. They don't have to. I'm not forcing them to. The only reason I'm saying this is because by some stretch of the imagination that Jumix actually watches this video and then actually responds to it, I know he's going to say, this guy was just in my DMs. He was on my dick. And yes, sir, I was because I want that real story for my own sick, morbid fascination. So, it's still on the table, Jumix, but yeah, just, uh, you know, preferencing that in case it happens, but it probably won't. He probably doesn't watch videos about himself. So looking forward to that documentary, buddy. I don't know if he could do like auto-tune shit, but he should be like, Jumix, why do you send me that Timo link? Why do you send me that Timo link? All I ever wanted was a feature from you and you sent me a Timo link. What the fuck is wrong with you? You can't even say the fucking N-word.